uh, all of their actions leading up to this point have been to uh, avoid a serious escalation, and this would cause exactly that. Uh, striking into Iranian territory is uh, such a big escalation that even when President Trump took out uh, Qasem Soleimani, he did it when uh, Soleimani was in Iraq. Right. And so crossing that red line of an attack into Iran is not something that we're expecting, but at the same time, the U.S. has vowed to respond, uh, and the strikes that they've already conducted haven't done enough to deter these militias from continuing their strikes. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle, and I'm joined today by defense reporter Mike Brest. Mike, we've had in the context of all this broader instability in the Middle East, U.S. service members killed. Talk about where this happened and what the Biden administration is doing to respond. So last weekend, uh, I, an Iraqi militia that has carried out now hundreds of these attacks, more than 100, uh, they carried out, they launched a, a drone uh, that was targeting a small U.S. outpost in the northeastern part of Jordan. Uh, this military base uh, is focused on helping uh, larger U.S. bases in Syria and Iraq in their defeat ISIS campaigns. Uh, and so this base, which only uh, is home to about 350 troops, uh, was attacked by an Iraqi militia. Uh, unlike so many other of these attacks, the air defense systems on the base did not intercept this drone strike. Uh, it landed uh, and impacted near a uh, sleeping quarters mm -hmm. of the soldiers. Three of them were killed, more than 40 were injured in the attack. Uh, and this is uh, now the, the Iraqi militias as a whole, there are various ones. All of them are supported by Iran, mm -hmm. uh, but they've now carried out more than 160 attacks, like, all, like the one that killed three. Uh, but they've carried out over 160 of these dating back to October against U.S. troops uh, in Iraq, Syria, and now Jordan. Uh, and so it felt like this was only a matter of time before service members would be killed by these ongoing drone attacks. Right. And so we've seen now President Biden announce publicly that he has decided how the U.S. will respond, though we haven't seen it come to play yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we've heard from defense officials that we're looking at uh, what will likely be a multi-pronged, potentially a multi-day attack in response to the death of these three soldiers. So there are members of Congress that are calling for a really forceful response to Iran, given the Iranian ties to these militias. The Biden administration doesn't seem likely to satisfy some of these calls, do they? They don't. <clears throat> so as you mentioned, the, the big question now, uh, as we await to see what the U.S. response will be, will be, uh, whether or not it will include uh, targets within Iran itself. Now, Irani the Iranian military has bases and forces in both Syria and Iraq uh, that the U.S. have already targeted those facilities, uh, but the U.S. has not uh, sort of crossed this red line of, of launching an attack into Iran. Right. And so, as you mentioned, it's unlikely the U.S. will do it now, as uh, all of their actions leading up to this point have been to uh, avoid a serious escalation, and this would cause exactly that. Uh, striking into Iranian territory is uh, such a big escalation that even when President Trump took out uh, Qasem Soleimani, he did it when uh, Soleimani was in Iraq. Right. And so crossing that red line of an attack into Iran is not something that we're expecting, but at the same time, the U.S. has vowed to respond uh, and the strikes they've already conducted haven't done enough to deter these militias from continuing their strikes. So reporters have heard from Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. There was obviously that controversy about his whereabouts when he was seeking medical treatment. What did he have to say? So I think first and foremost, uh, Secretary Austin apologized uh, for hiding his diagnosis. Uh, the treatment that he received and then the complications that he ultimately experienced afterward. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he acknowledged that this was wrong of him to hide the diagnosis. Uh, and he really acknowledged the fact that he is a private individual who mm -hmm. likes to keep things uh, very personal. Uh, that being said, he also recognized that someone with his position doesn't necessarily have the uh, rights to privacy of an average citizen. Mm -hmm. uh, he, upon questioning from reporters, uh, denied that he ever asked his staff or directed his staff to hide his 
hospitalization from the White House or from the, from the public, uh, but he also pointed to an ongoing Inspector General uh, investigation into what happened and said we'll know more once that report is released. Do people seem uh, satisfied with this response at this point? So far, uh, and we've also seen both the Pentagon and the White House uh, alter their protocols for when a cabinet official uh, has to transfer some of their authorities to uh, a deputy, which mm -hmm. is ultimately what Austin did when he was uh, taken back to the hospital. Right. Uh, and so that way, should this happen again, the president would be informed in a much more timely fashion than we saw this time around. Thank you, Mike. You can read Mike and the rest of our national security team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.